Alright, so I am bringing you this video to explain a new Jemba technique that I relatively just figured out. A um, few notes before we start. As you can tell, this is a classic Jemba. The head is goat skin or calf skin, one of the two, and the body is cedar or pine. I'm not sure I got this drum second hand, so... Oh, this is obviously... Bungee. So, oh, also, the microphone is absolutely horrid. It just doesn't capture any of the bass notes or any of the tones well in general. So, there's that. Alright, so, I'm starting to explain this new-ish technique. I don't even know if it's new. Maybe somebody else has figured it out. Maybe it's like a technique that's been around for years, centuries. I don't know. All I know is I just picked up this drum and I started playing it like this. And when I learned the actual technique with which you're supposed to play, it just was not anywhere near as useful as this. And it definitely limited my creativity somewhat. So, let's get right into it. Uh, bass notes, essentially the same. Just palm. The accents or taps are also going to be essentially the same. The difference is that when you play, instead of having the drum resting here, you're going to have it resting here on these little fluffs of fat on the fingers, I guess. Maybe they're muscle. I don't know what they are, but they're fluffy and they're right there. You can't miss them. So you're going to be playing like this. And in general, you want to try and keep the pinky and thumbs out of it. The pinky just hits with these three main fingers. That's totally fine. The thumbs aren't really good for anything. Well, they're good for one thing, but we'll get there. Anyway, so that. And then for accents, you're going to want to pull back up under this section of the hand. And, um, yeah, it's going to really accent it more. You can get the high note sound that you want to achieve as opposed to the normal what I like to think of as ghost notes that you get out of here. They're not necessarily ghost notes, but they're not accents, and you don't want to bring them out that much. They're there just to keep the groove. So I like to think of them as ghost notes. Um, here's where things start to get interesting. Palm muting. This may or may not be an actual technique. I've seen some people using it, but I'm not sure to what extent it's used. So, essentially just keeping palm on the drum, doing taps or bass notes with it. It essentially has the same effect as a side stick on a snare drum. And uh, even though you can only really use one hand to bring out the bass notes and the taps, well you can definitely do more with the right hand, I'll get to that in just a second. But you're basically going to just be using the left or right, if you're leaning with right, I lead with left. So, yeah, just... And the closer you bring your hand to your accent point, the higher it is going to be. So, it's kind of like cajon sliding your foot up and down. Uh, let's see. So, it's pretty pretty straightforward. This is where it gets really interesting. Finger taps. Finger taps you can do muted, uh, which I like to do most of the time. Or you can do them open um, wherever you are on the drum. And what I really use them for is to subdivide, most often triplets. Making an offbeat into a triplet is really, really useful and just sounds really good. I mean, I guess that's the only way to describe it. Show you here. And as you can see, I 
tend to enjoy palm muting after I do this because I'm lazy and I don't want to pick up my hand. I picked up my hand there, you can just use that beat for, I don't even remember what it's called. It's similar to a bossa nova beat on drum set. Like the ding 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 kind of feel. Um, yeah, that's basically what makes it really interesting is the finger taps, and you can move around. Of course, you don't gotta, don't have to keep it anchored, and using only this hand only for finger taps. You can also use the hand that does not lead for finger taps as well. Although that's significantly harder to do in, if you're focusing on accenting off beats, then. You're going to want to use this hand and accent the offbeats with your non-leading hand. <coughs> Excuse me. Anyway. So, yeah. That's that. Uh, thumbs. So, I like to use the thumbs just for color purposes, really. For adding, like, textures. Um... I don't really use them that much when I'm actually playing just because it's awkward to shift the hand from here to here to here I mean it's not that big of a difference but it's just awkward uh, more colors I like to use the actual body of the drum just knocking on it like you would knock on a door that's limited in use though So yeah, that's that. If you guys could leave in the comment section if this is something that's totally new, or if it's something that people have been doing for years, ages, whatever, I totally want to know because I just picked up the drum, like I said, and started doing this. I don't, I've never seen anybody else do it the way I do it, and I'm just throwing it out there. So that's that. Farewell and adieu. Uh, good night, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, whatever it is. Adios.